Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harrison. I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we have a review of a science fiction short story collection, which is Tales of the Sunny Terror, Volume 1 by Christopher Rocchio. So um, this book is available on Kindle Unlimited. It is um, in Christopher Rocchio's recommended reading order for the Sunny Terror of the like, if you want to read everything. This is technically after the second novella, Queen Amid Ashes, um, which is set after book two, Howling Dark. But um, I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for Queen Amid Ashes on my day off on Thursday. So um, I read Tell the Sunny Tale first. I'd be shocked if that has spoiled anything for me on Queen Amid Ashes because this, uh, there's only one story that definitively takes place after howling dark and it feels like it takes place like right after if that makes sense it doesn't feel like there's a, like anything i've missed so what i'm going to do is um this is going to be a non-spoiler review but i'm going to talk about each of the short stories and um, give you a short pitch and then kind of tell you what i thought about them um, there are there is one short story which is the final short story in the collection that I feel has some implications for the series as a whole or mm, may have implications for the series as a whole. Although I expect that I'm, it's kind of like an edge case, if that makes sense. Like I, it could in a certain light have big implications. So I'm going to do like a spoiler zone at the end where I'll talk about that one with full spoilers. Um, I do think you should read this collection because I really enjoyed it. Um, I think Christopher Rocchio's short work, for me, is actually... I don't want to say better than his full novels, but I really loved Lesser Devil, and I really, really loved all, all, basically all of these short stories bar one. Um, I thought one of them was a bit like... I don't know. One of them I didn't really get on with. Um, but basically all the rest I really liked. So also this new cover that they designed for Tales of the Sunny Third is incredible. I'm going to try and show you guys like it's just su it's super good and it's it's good in color. Um, uh, I love the the new style that Rocky has gone for with the Sunny Third logo where it's like kind of like that classic sci-fi book logo stuff. Anyway so let's go through the books. I've got my uh, I've written some notes on the old Kindle here. I've got my pen. So let's run through. Now, um, we're starting off with a short story called... Well, they're all short stories. We're starting off with a story called The Demons of Arane. Um, so what happens in this one is this one is actually um, a Hadrian POV. Um, so most of the others... In fact, none of the others are, are Hadrian POVs. Um, but this one is, is a Hadrian POV. And it's about um, Hadrian and the Red Company attacking an extracellarian pirate base. And uh, uh, they kind of go deeper and deeper and they find something that is kind of disturbing. Um, I would imagine that this could have implications further down the line for the story, but it also could have just been a one-off. Um, so... It's kind of like a introducing two elements together. So rather than going like, oh, this is just X enemy and Y enemy, this is kind of showing you like what happened if those enemies work together. Um, and I think that this is kind of like, um, it's, it's very clearly that the thing in this that's happening is like almost proof of concept, if that makes sense. It's like a first try at this thing, which I assume further down the line might become a much bigger and um, much more like pressing concern for Hadrian and the crew. Um, it features, um, it's set after Howling Dark, as I said, so this one's set after Howling Dark, um, and it talks about Hadrian being a knight of the Empire, um, and it also talks about, um, it, it has kind of some of your favourite characters in, so it's got... Um, Siren, she's in it quite a bit, and um, Polino is also mentioned. Um, 
pretty decent story overall. Starts off with some uh, really strong action and ends with some strong action as well. Um, good lore building, good story all round. Um, solid story, really enjoyed it. Um, this was a really good way to start the collection, I think, because you come straight off of the back of Howling Dark, or at least I did, and then it's kind of like a continuation of the ending of that in like short story form, which I thought worked really well. So next up, we have um, Victim of Changes. This one was interesting because this one is from the POV of someone who works for the Chantry. So it's a Preta and she is standing in judgment of um, an extra Solarian woman who has uh, augmented her body. Um, and they've got this extra Solarian woman who's got like this massive metal exoskeleton and her daughter is there with her, um, who appears to be unaugmented. And basically the this story is kind of like the inner thoughts of the Preter, which is really good. And it's nice to see, um, you know, so-called villains get their kind of point of view. And also, uh, and, you know, that villain POV, I love villain POV in books. Um, um, but also this is really good because it gives you a nice view into kind of like the mindset of a normal extra Solarian, not like the ones that we've seen mostly in the books who are kind of like criminals or crazy or, or whatever. So I really enjoyed that one as well. Um, the th This didn't really add much in terms of world building, um, uh, but I did think the characters were quite strong. And I, as I said, I really enjoyed that villain POV. And then the third story was one called not made for us um now this is the pov of a legionnaire um and he's been frozen for i think he mentions like 80 years or something so he left home to join the legions to kind of see the galaxy and um 80 years later they unfreeze him and when they unfreeze him they're sent straight into kind of like a military campaign after a couple of days of, you know, warming back up or whatever. And um, this military campaign ends up being on a Cielsin, um asteroid ship. Um, and uh, they see, you know, some pretty unsavory things. Pardon me. Um, they see some pretty unsavory things, but they also get to see the, the kind of, society almost of the Cielsin so they get to see like behind closed doors like where they live and where they eat and that sort of thing and, and that I thought was really interesting and the reaction also that you get in this one is that this um legionnaire I think it's it's intimated that he was or suggested that he was frozen before first contact with the Cielsin um and so when they wake him up and they throw him at the Cielsin he doesn't even know that um non-human life non-human intelligent uh, aggressive life exists so that's really interesting um the next one is called the night captain um and this was probably my favorite or like the most fun um actually no the next one no the next one's the worst one the one afterwards the penultimate story was my favorite but this one was a really close second so the night, night captain you follow uh, commander roderick holford so this man is um the commanding officer of uh hadrian's ship while all of the important people are in fugue while it travels at what between systems so he's um he's a palatine but from a very very low ranking family and he's like kind of a big wiener really like he's like never seen combat he doesn't even you know he doesn't know how to protect himself basically and he's uh he likes being a knight captain and basically the whole job for him is that while everyone who is important is asleep he'll stay awake for like 25 years and just get the ship from like refueling station to refueling station to destination and it's him and a hundred crewmen are kept awake and there's 90,000 people on Hadrian's ship. So that was really cool. Um, it's great to see how normal people in the timeline, like how they think about Hadrian and like how they see him. Because I feel like you only get Hadrian's 
point of view on himself in the main books. So it's really good to get that outside POV. Um, and I really liked um, Holford, and I would I really hope that he comes back up in the books. Someone did mention, uh, when I talked about liking this story, that this uh, story is referenced in later books. So I'm excited to see if maybe Holford turns back up. Um, but yeah, really good story. It was fun. The action was good. And I really liked the concept overall of the night captain, the night crew, and all that sort of stuff. Because obviously they don't use robots or automation or computers in the same way in the Sunny's universe. So they kind of have to have these crew that are going to like live their whole lives basically on a ship while the majority of everyone else is asleep. It's interesting because like 25 years that it takes to get them from place to place, like that's not a short amount of time. And I think in the previous book in Howling Dark, Hadrian's space flight is like 40 years. So like that night captain has aged 40 years i mean he's palatine so he can expect to live like 700 years um but yeah interesting idea uh love the love everything about it i would like to see more night captain stories even if they're not holford but i would like to see more from holford because he was fun um next story is called the duelist so the duelist was actually an interesting one because it was written for audio dramatization. So it wasn't actually written for prose. It was written for a dramatization. And I found that dramatization on YouTube by literally just, it's on um, Christopher Rocchio's channel. He's posted it on the Sunny channel. And um, so uh, I was like, well, if he's written it for this format, that's the format I'm gonna, gonna read it in. So I went for a walk around the block and, and listened to it, it was like 20 minutes. Um, this one was the worst one and I don't know whether it's because of the way that I listened to it rather than read it um, but essentially it's just a duel between two characters that are not not that interesting I guess um, it was good In it was like a solid like three, three out of five maybe um, whereas all the rest I think it was it looked worse by how good all the other stories were and especially because the one before it the night captain i loved and the one after it which is called parliament of owls i really loved that was my favorite so let's move just straight on to that one to be honest so parliament of owls is like a noir short story set on like a backwater planet run by the wong hopper consortium and uh, the main character the pov is an ex-legionnaire who is working as like a private eye called a hunter for the wong hoppers and he is trying to track down some stolen human embryos like fertilized embryos and the idea for these embryos is that they will be added to colonies so when colonies establish in order to get the genetic diversity to not have inbreeding they need to have like several hundred babies added to the, the pool gene pool at, the, at a time so that's what's essentially happening with these embryos um really good concept really good idea um the eventual villain was really cool and um, the whole kind of concept of like this noir story told in the sunny to universe was truly excellent and i really liked um the actual planet that rocky chose to set it on which is like a planet that's not fully human habitable yet which i thought was really good and i think we need to see more of that kind of place in the sunny Two books okay so the final story was called the pits of imesh um and as you might guess it's set in the gladiatorial pits on imesh it's set when hadrian was still pretending to be a myrmidon uh, in the gladiatorial arena and basically it covers a short very short span of time and um, before hadrian kind of unwittingly reveals himself um or wittingly i don't know it was, that was a bad plot point i think so it's before then um but he's also been in the pits for a while so you know he's got friends you know he, he him and switch are, are good friends and um it basically shows you one battle of the myrmidons facing off against a um alien monster like a gigantic monster thing and then uh it shows you 
kind of the aftermath of that that battle and i really enjoyed this one i think it was it's not all the ones apart from the duelist were really good um and i think that coming off of the back of uh, parliament of owls which was really excellent and was my favorite this one looked a little worse by comparison but also i think that i was also really enjoying all these stories not being about hadrian the interesting thing about the pits of imesh is that the pits of imesh is not from hadrian's point of view it's from the point of view of someone who i think does not like hadrian um it's not revealed who it is uh, but it feels like this person has like a real bone to pick with Hadrian um, and does not like him. And it also gives us a little bit of information or kind of actually it's quite a major plot point in this story. Um, so I think it's time to shift over to the spoiler zone. So this is not going to spoil any of the core main Sunny to books apart from elements of empire of silence um however uh obviously you should read this short story collection because it's very good and uh, all of it is on kindle unlimited so if you pay for one month you can read literally four sunita collections and some short and some of the novellas as well so it's well worth it for the price of one sunita book you could read the three short story collections and two novellas in fact i think three novellas so i'm going to dive straight into this now spoiler zone i'm waving my hand so that in editing i know to add a red border around this right so in this uh the pov narrator talks about how hadrian was paying a sex worker called cat like cat who hadrian talks about in empire of silence was paying a sex worker for essentially exclusive use of her so he's paying she was like a sex slave and he was paying her masters for exclusive use of her and apparently the rumor according to this book this book this short story was that hadrian spent basically every penny that he had on keeping her as his exclusive use sex worker um if this is true and this is the actual cat from empire of silence then that's very interesting i feel like the high probability because that then what that does is that shows us that hadrian is an unreliable narrator which i feel like rocchio has been trying to subtly weave in to the main books and not it's not that he's saying a thing happened and then showing you that it didn't but what he has been doing is making uh, making hadrian feel a little bit suspicious maybe um uh, yeah so and I, I also did i saw an interview with him where he talked about hadrian as an unreliable narrator it was an interview with daniel green worth worth watching if you haven't seen it but if this is the case and cat was a sex worker then is any of the cat story true the hadrian in this short story does not reference cat from the streets in any way um hadrian in empire of silence does sleep with cat they have a romantic relationship in the same way that sex worker cat and hadrian do in the pits of imesh um so he could fudge a few details and you know fabricate this new version of cat so it's definitely something that i want to i want to explore and i think that possibly the most likely explanation is that actually the pits of imesh is from a biased unreliable narrator who is twisting the facts to support his feeling his or her feelings about who hadrian is as a person and how they're a bad person so 
maybe it has those implications maybe it doesn't really interesting story um and i liked getting this extra view into the myrmidon times at empire of silence because it's been a while since i read that book um so i had forgotten well not forgotten but the the, the details of the myrmidon times had gone a little fuzzy so i think it's quite interesting and obviously in empire of silence cat dies before hadrian becomes a myrmidon so we have a new cat is this possibly a sex worker that he calls cat that isn't cat because i think cat in empire of silence is spelled with a k whereas this is cat spelled with a c um obviously this is all this is being written by a third party so yeah really really interesting um, i love that rockio wrote this um while it wasn't my favorite of the stories i think it's the one that has the most interest and connection from me for the rest of the books um, and it's definitely going to make me read more of these Tales of the Sun Eater books. If you haven't read any of the Tales of the Sun Eater, you definitely should. Um, I really enjoyed this short story collection. I think that The Lesser Devil was excellent as well. Don't sleep on these novellas and short stories just because you think that you only need to read the main novels. Rocchio has said you can just read the main novels, but I think... <sighs> Get, 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 get involved get everything you know if you read the bound and the broken without reading the novellas i feel like you'd miss some like genuinely uh, essential character development and plot stuff whereas ugh, not as not so much here but also the work the expanding of the world building from all these other points of view was really excellent um this video is um, way longer than i intended it to so let's just cut it there Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you have read or would like to read this short story collection based on my little pitches for you. Um, I loved all these stories except for The Duelist. Um, and The Duelist is fine, um, just not as exciting as the others. Um, please do like this video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel because every little subscription helps and I love seeing that number go up. Thanks so much for watching. I'll speak to you tomorrow.